guys, it's Jeff Romano around at Quizman. I brought up my uh, new grapple, my new log grapple, and uh, was trying to hook it up. And uh, unfortunately, it, whoops, unfortunately, it uh, appears that these pins are a little bit high. Um, I tried multiple times. I, this was seated in real good, and it just would not go on. I couldn't even get a clamp and pinch it to get, pinch it forward in order to, to pull it into the tractor. Same with both sides. So obviously I don't want to have to cart this whole grapple back. This, these are the, uh, the bolt-on adapter kits for the John Deere uh, hookup. And so what I'm going to do is just take these off, bring them back. This is actually um, a sundown grapple from uh, JS Woodhouse, but it's actually made by uh, England, I N G, uh, England, I think. I, it's either I N G or I G, I G L A N D, um, over in uh, Sweden. Just double check that. Yeah, it's, it's in Swedish. <laughs> I think it's Sweden. Um, but, anyways, I'm going to take this off, bring these back, and uh, hopefully they can just ship me another set of the brackets that do fit. I'm going to have them test it out. Um, what I'm going to do is take these, just to, to verify I'm not crazy here, I'm going to take these, we'll go and mount them on the tractor, try to mount them on the tractor, and show that there's no way to get that to get these on. So here we go. I had to get a 30, million, 30 millimeter socket from Harbor Freight because I didn't have anything that was that big. I don't know if my battery's dead. No. Nope. Well, you know what? Let's try that. It's like I'm getting little pulses out of this. This thing's always worked fine, so I don't know what's going on. I'm not getting a uh, an actual You know, I'm going to change the battery. It says it's got three bars, but some's not quite right with it. So, I'll go get a different one. Put in one of the HP batteries and see if that helps. Yeah, I think that battery, even though it said it was three bars, I don't believe it. I'm going to put this nut back on just a little bit so the thing doesn't fall on my feet here. Okay, now I'll bring you guys around and we'll uh, go show you that we got issues hooking around the front of the tractor.
obviously I got the wrong side. It goes over here. So you can see I've got this seated up here. It's not going anywhere. But down here, hopefully you guys can see it. It there's no way it's going in. It's off by I don't know, maybe a six, maybe an eighth of an inch. If it was down another eighth to a quarter of an inch. You can see the big gap at the bottom, and then up top it just sort of rubs there. So, uh, so yeah, we'll send these back. Hopefully, uh, they'll be able to get me new ones, and I'll test them at the local John Deere dealer before I bring them all the way out here. So, uh, anyways. The things that we run into when we have equipment, right? Big problems. So, uh, we'll, not a big deal. We'll, uh, we'll get these uh, straightened out and we'll get the new brackets uh, up here and we'll get them put on and uh, hopefully we won't have any more issues and we'll be ready to go. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Hey, guys. So, it's Jeff from Adirondack Woodsman here. And uh, today I'm going to work on hopefully finally assembling my grapple and getting it to, uh, to work, the, uh, the new log lift. Uh, I'm sorry, the new uh, log grapple. Um, I had an issue with these uh, bracket mounts not fitting. Um, and apparently, even though they were made for supposedly for John Deere, on the, on the uh, Series 3 320R loader, um, this narrows up a lot faster than on any of the other John Deere models, including the other John Deere Series 3 light, lighter loader and any other uh, John Deere tractors. If you go look, you'll see it comes down more like this. So what I did was uh, uh, my dealer actually ended up cutting this off here on both sides. This used to go straight down. And uh, it, that was almost all I had to do. I was able to get one on after that. Uh, because what it was doing, it was hitting here and it wasn't getting on all the way. And then I couldn't put the pin in. Um, this one almost fit, but I couldn't get it to come in quite far enough. I think the weld on the pins down here, uh, specifically on the one that I, I'm connected to, uh, were, was just enough that it, it was keeping it from coming in all the way. So I used a band file, a Milwaukee band file that I'd gotten for another project. And what I did was, I'm just showing you on this pin because the other one's uh, attached. I just filed this down some in order to get it to uh, be able to come in all the way. So now that I got that to work, what we're going to do is we're going to end up bolting these back on to the um, uh, sundown grapple, which is, is basically an England, England grapple um, out of, uh, I want to say Switzerland or Sweden, one of those countries over there. Uh, show my no knowledge of geography here. <laughs> um, but I'm going to bolt this on and hopefully be able to get a chance to use this for the first time. So stay tuned. Okay, so basically we're going to fix the... Uh, the mounting brackets back onto the winch. Um, they had some really big bolts here. Um, I ended up going out and getting some sockets from Harbor Freight. I wasn't sure what the size was. I just knew it was bigger than, uh, than 20, uh, 22, 23 millimeters. It is metric. So I ended up getting this, uh, get this set. Basically it was called a front wheel drive axle lock nut kit from Pittsburgh, uh, their Pittsburgh uh, brand that they carry there. And it, it turned out I needed a 30 millimeter uh, socket, which uh, I had a range of them in there to deal with. It wasn't super expensive, so I got that kit instead of trying to buy a bunch of individual sockets. So we're going to work on trying to get this stuff, uh, get these brackets attached. And then hopefully everything will still line up. Now, the question is, I think, I believe the uh, nut was on the inside. That 
caught in my pocket here. Get it started. The brackets aren't light. They're not super heavy, but they're not light either. There is um, nylon, what I call nylon washers on these, so uh, they don't spin very easily until you get them just just while you're getting them started so let's see how this goes here. know if there's something wrong with my gun but it seems to do little bursts and then stops it was doing it last time and I kind of blamed it on the battery but this one's got four four uh, bells on it so uh, you gotta let go and then do it again I'm not quite sure why I want to make sure this thing is tight, tight. It's on automatic. Let's try putting it on three. That might work a little better. And I must have hit the switch and going the wrong way. Okay, that's on tight. We'll get the other one started. Okay, let's see if it mounts now.
Okay, this side's in. And this side is in. We're good. So now, the other thing I had to do is I had to have some adapters made. I never realized how many hydraulic, different types of hydraulic fittings there are. Um, these were using a European uh, pipe thread. The guy had a whole suitcase where he was able to try them on and figure out uh, what, what they were using. And then I'm using a standard, um, standard adapter for a John Deere hydraulics on this end. So he made me a little, couple little sections that would allow me to do it because there was no way I could come up with the right adapter to go directly without putting a little piece of hose in between, which is fine. Let's see how this, uh, this is gonna route here. I'm gonna end up strapping that there so I don't get caught with my uh, with my uh, piston there. Oh. Gonna actually turn it off in order to hook it up here. There was a little more flexibility in this hose here, but it is what it is. A little tight. Okay, I got one in. And we got two in. I wish this uh, leveling bar wasn't in the way. It kind of, it's kind of annoying. It kind of gets in my way when I'm uh, trying to hook up the hydraulics. I don't know, at some point I may move it to the other side. They're, probably isn't that hard to do so we may consider doing that at some point okay let me get a tie wrap around that uh, hose these aren't quite long enough interesting gonna get yeah that's actually pretty good right there I was gonna get one more set but I think that'll work okay let's try it out couple more tie wraps on the other part of the hose show you what I'm doing here I saw this part of the hose kind of rub up against that so I'm gonna try tying this down as well we'll see There, that should uh, work a little bit better. Oh, 
Okay, nice and smooth. Um, the only thing I might do is there's grease fittings here. I think I'm going to grease lube them up before I uh, take this thing out to try it. Looks like one, two, three, three, I think just three grease fittings. Don't know if there's one underneath. Yep, there's one down there as well, it appears. Or no, that's that's actually just the hydraulic cylinder. No, yeah, I don't know. Well, that's a grease fitting too, I believe. Um, that one I can see the grease coming out, so I think I'm good down there. Up here. Kind of looking for where the grease might come out. This one doesn't look like it's greased. This one might be, but we'll do these top three. The bottom one, I can see the grease coming out and hasn't been used yet, so we'll uh, we'll start with that. These are funny. They put little things to hold on the, uh, the little grease cap, but they come right off. They don't actually stay on. So let's get our grease gun out. There we go. Put that there. Put that there. Get the last one. Ugh. That there. See any grease coming out yet? There we go. There we go. I see it coming out. Okay guys, so let's uh, let's get this thing over to the wood piling and try her out for the first time. Get a, get some logs lifted and cut. 